I'm going to review that movie and I'm going to talk about this painting that I did and um, there's a reason why I brought the, the book with the flowers out. So those flowers, I drew them from that picture. So the, the impatience there. So I'm just going to stick this just the inside over here. So I'm not, I'm not gone far. And because uh, I don't want that that painting to get wrecked. So um, that was another one, a lesson from the watercolor secret secrets DVD. You um, learned a lot of lessons off of yeah, that. Too. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I'm still working through it, but I had to return it. So. Um, to the Maybe library, so I'll have to get it out again at some point, but um, the picture, that lesson was some, like, from the rocks and mountains or something like that, discs, so. Um, there were several discs that came with that series? Yeah. How many? Nine. Dozen? Nine wow. discs. Wow. Yeah, and um, I am now on disc number eight. I'm on the figures. Yeah. That's uh, not numbers, that's human figures, I presume? Yeah. So far, I um, showed people the lesson two figures, the simplified poses, I think it was called, or something. No, I, I think I can't remember what that lesson was called, but it was lesson two. Kind and, of dealing with stick figures? Um, well, no. That lesson was the weird, messed up question mark, or not question mark, the exclamation mark. So well, the they're kind of like For the stick heads figures. on the top and yeah. then point at the bottom, right? So it's really just a man's pose. He says you can use it for men or women, but I mean, with the hip to um, shoulder ratios for men, it really only works for men. The it kind of looked like the uh, Greek uh, little symbol they use for men's washrooms. No. Oh. You, yeah. Uh, but you know, the figure they have for women mm -hmm. is a little more ample. You know, like the, she actually has hips. Oh. It's kind of interesting. Okay. Kind of old world, eh? They like their women curvy. I hope so. So anyway, yeah, this is um, the picture of Impatience was from this Lois Holes bedding plant favorites. And... Um, is she from Alberta? Yes, yeah, she is. Um, There's some place up north that's uh, kind of dedicated to it. No? Uh, well, I think she was from... Edmonton. Edmonton. So yeah, here we go. I, I think it's she did. Um, I can't remember. I think she was a. I don't know what it was. Maybe a mayor. Or I honestly, I don't know. She was something to do with politics, oh, okay. and um, she did a lot of a lot of good things uh, around Edmonton, though. I'm, I'm not yeah, sure. we're not going to hold the politics again. No, sure. whatever. Anyway, she she might have been a good one. I have no idea. Every so occasionally, I'm, a nice person to track. I don't I don't know. I don't know enough about. I'm not from Edmonton area. I don't know what she was doing exactly, but I do know that she has a, that she likes gardening, right? So she has some books and um, and this has a lot of uh, bedding plant favorites in here that. I mean, who doesn't like impatience? So I put impatience in because I was thinking of the impatience that I had in these, um, in the window planters along the deck and uh, last, this past summer. And um, the picture in here didn't have the same kind of impatience that I had on the deck. So I. You went for warmer colors. So. Yeah, some orangey sort of thing. So. Um, even though this is pink in the picture, I just made it orange and yellow instead of dark pink and light pink. So, I don't know. And I didn't go with, like, I wasn't that picky about where the flowers were and stuff on my drawing. I just looked at them and tried to get them sort of similar. And in that picture, you'll notice there was some little thin white um, stems, flower stems and that they have here. And how I did that is I just did it with um, just, um, what's that st stuff called again? 
that paint that's here that I just got. Gouache? Gouache. I did it with the white gouache. And um, I, don't, I don't know if I used masking fluid in for this, for the flowers. For, but anyway, I probably used masking fluid somewhere in that picture, but not for the flowers. So anyway, I am using a lot less masking fluid now that I'm more comfortable with painting. I'm, I'm not afraid, oh, I'll slop over the edge or what I was just don't. I guess I don't care that much if I slop over the edge and I'm, it, I get it pretty right anyway. So I haven't been using the masking fluid that much. But um, anyway, body at Brighton Rock. This murder mystery? Well, it's, it's actually pretty interesting. I don't want to give it away. You know there's going to be a dead body that somebody's going to find. But um, one thing that I found interesting is I had just received an email from Parks Canada about apply for your dream job. And I was thinking, oh, should I? Because I always think that. And then I think, oh, if I lived in the park or right near the park, I could. And anyway, then I watched this and I'm like, yeah, I, I'm really too old to be trying to wrestle with a bear or whatever. I don't know. So, but James and I have had no problems <coughs> with bears. Um, it's amazing. You yeah. Know, some people that say, I mean, I've seen dozens, hundreds of bears. One guy we're talking about. Yeah. But it's not as though we make a lot of noise. No. Well, we, we sometimes see them, but they're not, they haven't been a problem with us. I've and only met one on honestly, the trail, and it was, it uh, took evasive action. Yeah, I mean. I wasn't mean, scared or We haven't like run that. into grizzly bears. Hmm. We've run into black bears on the trails and stuff, or near the trails, but the black bears, I don't know. I guess I'm just not, not afraid of them. I'm more afraid of running across a pit bull while walking in town than running across a black bear. While it's amazing. On the trails. You see, You'll see women, little women. It's like Louisa May Alcott time, walking two pit bulls, and I'm going, one of those could drag you like a movie horse, and you'd be like a uh, a, a cowboy getting dragged behind. They have no idea how strong pit bulls are. They'll, they can drag a car. No, the car would be in neutral. That's one, not two. Excuse me. And, uh, you know, it's not a smart car. Just but, a regular... And, I mean, I guess I should, I should say we don't pack bear spray alone. We go out in pairs. We never go out alone. If I, I was out alone, I'd, I've talked about how I'd make my own bear spray. I'd put a big so super soaker, strap it over my back, and walk around like Rambo with it full of um, <laughs> it's my homemade Rambo. bear spray. But... Um, uh, anyway, because I think that would be funny. And yeah, it would be. Yeah. yeah get you kicked out of the park for good. But who knows? I don't think it would. Why would it? I bet it, a super soaker would shoot further than those bear spray containers. Of course, those bear spray containers. If if you're blowing it into the wind, you're just going to get you're going to eat it. Well, that that's it. So. Um, and I've heard that. I've People have talked about uh, bear spray with me and they're like, yeah, this happened and the face, then you're blind and you can't see anything because you end up, you know, so whatever. But some people swear by it and some people don't. We haven't packed around bear spray. We've been fine. Mm -hmm. But there was one time I wished I'd had bear spray and that's when we ran into those cougars. I would have felt a lot safer with a bear spray. One cougar's dangerous enough. Yeah. There were two of them. But anyway. They so were playing on the path that we had to take to get back to our car. Yeah. Big kitties. So I yelled at them and I picked up the biggest stick I could carry, which wasn't the biggest one I could find. I got five fractured vertebrae. And they were smart, those kitties. Back then you didn't though. That was before your back went. I don't think so. Yeah, it was. That was when you were still strong. Yeah, it was. Anyway, um...
as soon as they heard Paul, Pauline whisper to me, and they were a long ways away, oh. their hearing is stunning. Yeah. Uh, she just said, look, I didn't see them. I came over a little bit of a rise. It was weird because we'd been up a ways to see uh, waterfalls. And came I, back, I, but I it grabbed was down the camera low. out, but I just got pictures of the tail ends running up the hill. That's all I, I got. That's, well, no yeah, I, I saw them while they were still on the path. They were running way down yeah. the path, and I'm going, I don't want that. Mm -hmm. Them, They'll just meet. We had a long ways to get back to the mm -hmm. car. Well, I wasn't too comfortable so, with them going up the hill either. Well, because I bet you they were following us the whole way down. Uh, I don't think so. I, we I think they got scared. The they got they were really scared. As soon as I started yelling at them, they started. It was it was a mountain, not a hill, but uh, they started going uphill on up the mountain, and they were they were really scampering. They were, they were scared, and that's the way you want wildlife to be when they're. But anyway, this around. movie is a, if you haven't guessed, this mm -hmm. is about somebody who works in a park. Like, uh, I don't, they didn't say it was a national park, I don't think, or anything like that, but Is it in the United like States? Well, no, I don't know. Probably. I'm not sure. It's Mountain, Mountain Estate Park, it says. It doesn't say exactly where, but. Mountain Estate. Oh, anyway, man. Was um, it a grizzly or was it a black bear? Oh, I think it was a grizzly that okay. she was tangling with. Okay. But, um, honestly, there were a lot of scary parts in the movie. And some funny parts too. It was really well done. I really enjoyed watching that movie. So. Oh, it's one of these magnolia things. That's amazing because most of the stuff they produce is, well, okay. Yeah, like rotten magnolias. Mm. It must smell bad. Mm. Well, you were going to review some books. Where are you? Yeah, books? I've got them. Well, I'm protecting them. Oh, from you're the protecting water, them right? from the water. Drinking. I mean, th yeah. this thing's plasticized. It's this... almost done melting. If you look up, there's just a, two little pieces left up there. Well, I can feel the stuff coming down. But anyway, so here's stuff that I've been threatening to review. So okay. we'll deal with Isaac As 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 Asinine. 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 to the bag. Okay. I'll tell you how much time you have, but you should have lots. I know. All right, you have lots of time. Oh, yeah. Over 15. Oh, yeah, there we go. Anyway, Isaac uh, Asinine Moth. And Asinine means ass like, but uh, it comes from the Latin and it means donkey like, okay? I just want to make that clear. Some people might think that I'm cussing or something. I really should be cussing about Isaac Asimov. Isaac Asimov was one of the guys that got involved in the, as I recall, along with Carl Sagan, another uh, sci-fi, sci science popularizer, and uh, Harlow Shapley. And I think Harlow Shapley hung way out on the left wing. I think some people might describe him as a communist. He'd actually been so-called witch hunted by a uh, McCarthy and Company, late 40s or early 50s, probably the late 40s, because the Velikovsky affair started in 1950. And of course, uh, lefties are uh, just, they're not really a good lefty, unless they're witch hunting someone. And so, you know, like uh, there was a person who uh, came along in the wake, a sociologist of some sort or another, called Alfred de Grazia, came along in the wake of uh, Velikovsky, the, he wasn't there right at the beginning. I just want to stop you for a minute and point out that we are left-wingers. Yes, we are. But, uh, yeah, of course. Uh, and we don't witch hunt people. Well, we're exceptions. Mm -hmm. You know, like the majority of left-wingers out there are uh, just uh, really, really gung-ho about uh, if they don't do the witch hunt, They'll get other people, let's say, of uh, religions that they particularly favor and stuff like that, uh, to do the witch hunt. And uh, there's at least one religion over there, witch hunting is uh, in those death. So, and uh, it's very much seems to be the favorite of. Uh, they're f fake left wingers, really. They're not really left wingers. You can't go around witch hunting and be a left wing. Mm -hmm. That's a, you know, you should believe in freedom of speech, aside from calling. Uh, out fire in a crowded theater or uh, uh, putting a contract out on someone. And uh, that involves the mafia, but it also involves the religion that's the favorite of uh, uh, these uh, 
Oh, fake left fingers. Dishes it. So, uh, yeah, that's a point uh, that's well made and should be well taken. Okay. So, uh, Isaac Asimov uh, uh, got involved with that. And, uh, well, I was men you know, he mentions Harlow Shapley many, many times in this. Uh, uh, this Thing. This uh, book was published in 1966. Let's see if I can find Harlow in here. Uh, you know, how many pages is that? Well, only seven pages, but uh, that's more than many astronomers. Let's see how many times Galileo is mentioned. I mean, he's uh, vital. Galileo. Five, six, seven, eight times. How many was Shapley? Was it seven or eight? Let's just see. Come on, Harlow. Come on, Harlot. Shapley. Seven times. So one less than Galileo. How about uh, Nikola Copernic or whatever his name was? Otherwise known as Copernicus. Nicholas Copernicus. I think they spell it with a C, don't they? Certainly. Copernicus, three times. Harlow Shapley, more than twice as many uh, pages in whole or in part devoted to it. Well, that, that's fascinating. How about Johannes Kepler? Now, understand, there was a woman that uh, Harlow Shapley got to do his hatchet work uh, in the witch hunting of Velikovsky, and her name was uh, Payne Gaposhkin. I can't recall her first name. Is it Maria or something like that? Cecilia, I think, which means blind, actually. But she wasn't blind to Harlow Shapley. She was married to an astronomer's mentioned in her. She's not mentioned herself, but uh, her, her maiden name, I think, is Payne. And there was a guy called Gapashkin. Here we are. He gets one mentioned. Sergei Ilyarionovich, which would probably be the son of something like Hilarion or Hillary. Uh, anglicized, Sergei, uh, I'm pretty sure it's Russian, Gapushkin, interesting, Gapushkin, I'm not sure where the accent comes from, but uh, Shapley got her to do his dirty work, that was Gapushkin's wife, and eventually she just came to the a judgment about Shapley, As, and, and it would have been around the time, maybe even earlier than uh, this book was written, she, she just said, uh, he's just in it for, he's not really an astronomer, he's just in it for, uh, you know, like, uh, to, for self-publicizing, self-publicizing, yeah, that's hard to show. And one of the things he did was uh, try to get, uh, the way he witch-hunted uh, Velikovsky was, Velikovsky was going to get published, this is 1950, World's in Collision, and uh, uh, I should make uh, clear that, uh, his scenario about Venus galumping around the inner part of the, the solar system is all wrong. Okay. Venus is the most stable of planets, it has the most circular orbit, and uh, stuff like that. So uh, it, it wasn't. Now, that having been said, uh, his uh, view on catastrophism being involved with. Uh, uh, stuff coming in from outer space is <laughs> spot on. And it wasn't until 30 years later, pretty well to the day, 1980, compared with when he published 1950, when all of a sudden uh, there's a guy and his son saying, hey, we, we discovered this layer of, uh, with, laced with radioactivity. I don't know if it was the size of a quarter. We'll say it's the size of a dime, just to be careful. Uh, at Gubbio, Italy, but he claimed to have, hey there, dear, you've got some amazing horns there. And, uh, yeah, there's a deer in Poland's yard. Uh, very handsome. And uh, they claim to have found it, and I don't think anyone's disputed that, uh, this radioactive bearing layer all around the world. And from there, the idea came that the world got hit by, I think they say a meteor. Uh, it's basically in the, I believe, on the edge of the Yucatan Peninsula, you know, kind of where it meets the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, yeah, what they don't understand is it would have been a comet, and you know, like that's one hit on 
kind of like on the Earth's surface, uh, like on the continental surface. But, you know, the world, the surface is, I think more than two-thirds, maybe close to 70% water. And a woman a while back at a Ivy League institution, uh, Columbia University, uh, so this is maybe starting 25 years ago, something like that, 20 years ago, but more than 20. Uh, she was saying, hey, I found all sorts of impact sites in the bottom of oceans. Right. Lots of them. Lots and lots and lots of them. Uh, her research, I don't think, goes back as far as the time of the dinosaurs. And you know, like the surface of the ocean floor probably wouldn't preserve something from, we're told it's 65 billion years ago. That's probably uh, somewhat melodramatic. Uh, they find that the potassium argon dating on, let's say, Mount St. Helens is off maybe by a factor of 10. So 6.5 million years ago, something like that. That's the dating system that they use for stuff that's uh, too old to be dated by carbon-14. Uh, stuff uh, that was dated, uh, a volcano that blew off in Hawaii a few hundred years ago, tested thousands of years old, yeah. off by maybe a factor of 10. But uh, yeah. anyway, long time ago. Uh, anyway, uh, Harlow Shapley, yeah, Payne Kaposhkin finally said that uh, he was just more into self-publicizing. And one of the ways he, uh, I mean, he had, uh, he was one of these idiots who thought that the, can you imagine, the Milky Way was all there was to it. I gather he thought that was the universe. <laughs> yeah, you know, if you look outside the plane of the Milky Way, which is basically the galaxy, our galaxy, the way we view it, we're kind of embedded in it. We're not right in the center, not even close, thank heavens, we get roasted, I'm sure. Uh, but uh, we're zapped to death by radi radiation coming from galaxy central. But uh, when you look, uh, let's say this is uh, the Milky Way. Did you see him on the galaxy? other side of Yeah, the I saw him. Do, do you want to get a picture of him? <laughs> will, is he so still there? Yeah, he's right here. Hi, Yeah, honey. I think the folks would love to see him. He's an amazing pair of antlers. That's what I saw. There he is. I it was Hi. Him. Did okay. you want me to get you an I apple? I'll get you an apple. You just stay here. Okay. You can go ahead and talk. I'll get the yeah, apple. exactly right. <laughs> if the camera's focused on me, what the hey, hi there. Anyway, um, uh, what was I saying? Harlow Shapley. Yeah, he was a skunk. Uh, and, uh, oh yeah, it was Alfred de Grazia, a sociologist, said, oh, the reason why he was witch hunting, he never used that term. Well, Velikovsky was because he'd been witch hunted by McCarthy. Well, you know, like uh, the uh, nifty shifty hefty lefties, the one that were way out on the left wing. They were the ones who were hiding what Stalin was doing. What he was doing was real witch hunting. You know, when you hunt witches, if you don't kill someone, it's not re you know, like, what did they do in New England? Burn the witches or something like that? It's not really witch hunting, okay? You know, there all these nifty shifty left. Oh, you know, like... No, 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 no. Yeah. Look, apple. Apple guy. Hey. You want food? Come on. Food. What? Food. He got scared for some reason. Oh, I scared him. Yeah, I think it was I just mentioned too much of Harlow Shop. I'll probably find deer vomit out in the, the yard there. Maybe he said deer will taste. Anyway, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, like, uh, it's stunning. They're crying. Oh, you know, like Lillian Hellman writes a book, Scoundrel Time, you know, about... Uh, I think she was writing that not about Nixon uh, in his uh, second incarnation, but way back when. Jesus H. Christ! She she kept her little uh, her little dacha, as it were, up in New England all this time. Yeah, Hollywood didn't want to hire her as a writer. I, she can't have been a very good writer. Well, I haven't read anything by her, but Jesus, uh, you know, like they they were uh, hiring lefties 
did, right, left, and center, whether, whether, left, left, and lefter. Um, yeah. Left, lefter, and leftists. But, um, yeah. Anyway, uh, this, he kind of, Isaac Asimov, getting back to him, he got involved. It's Carl Sagan was the worst. They, uh, you know, when Velikovsky was just uh, <laughs> like two feet from the grave, he would have been about 79, I think, like that. Or maybe it was 1979. And he was getting up near 80. And uh, Carl Sagan uh, set up a, a kind of like a, not really a seminar, but uh, a convention or, or something like that, where the Velikovskians were supposed to face off with uh, conventional astronomers. And uh, it was supposed to be set up, there'd be Velikovsky on his side, and he'd have his experts on his side, and then there'd be Carl Sagan and company over on the other side, all the experts. Then uh, what happens is, Velikovsky turns up, he's almost 80 years old, Sagan's, you know, I, I don't think he's even 50. A young pup, and they, he's got all his guys on the side. They don't allow anyone to come in and argue on Velikovsky's side. So here are all these young pups lined up, just firing questions at them. And then they publish their findings. And they said, we won the debate. Well, according to people who were there, who are kind of not really involved one side or the other, the crowd was on Velikovsky's side. Uh, there were things that they came up with that he wouldn't be able to answer, but Jesus H. God, he was almost 80 years old. You try something like that with one person the age of Sagan, much less a whole, a whole flotilla of them. Absolutely disgusting. And since then, they've been going around saying, hey, you don't hear much about Velikovsky anymore. Hey, we really showed him up. You know, like kind of LeBron James beating their chests and all this sort of stuff after he uh, does a dunk or whatever. Absolutely shameful. How much time? Two minutes? Uh, 30 seconds. A <coughs> uh, minute and a half. Sorry. Okay. Anyway, it's uh, uh, this is okay. I mean, it's a very conventional. You know, if you want to find out the way the universe really works and you don't want to talk to me about it, uh, you'll discover uh, someone called Alphvin who actually predicted that the universe out there would be chock full of electromagnetic fields. Einstein is a big hero here. He was saying it's empty space. It ain't empty space. Now understand the people who follow Alpha, and there's a guy called Lerner. He says the Big Bang never happened. He's right, but he's wrong about it. He's saying, okay, just in our local area, everything's flying away from us. It's not everything is flying away from us. He doesn't understand. We live in a great big galumphing galaxy bigger than pretty well anything out there else out there and we've got they haven't detected it they never will they'll never get to the edge of the galaxy but we've got a huge galaxy wind moving away from us there are two two count them two doppler shifts for light and what's happening is the stuff coming from these feeble galaxies from outside of us is getting slowed down and it gets a redshift as a result that's what's happened so Lerner hasn't even figured it out. But you, you'll you'll start to figure it out. Elfin actually won a Nobel Prize. He's not a wackazoid kind of guy. You can't go around saying that about him. He actually apparently wanted to, he might even have, uh, uh, when he won the Nobel Prize, he rejected the work. He I, I think he tried to reject the Nobel Prize.